Welcome to Collectors of the Coast, I am Cash, and we're going to do another fireside chat about Secret Lair Ultimate Edition 2. Uh, the, this one is the flip lands uh, from the Zendikar Rising and Kaldheim. So uh, we're going to get 10 new reprints of those cards. Uh, I wanted to talk about it. Um, I'll go a little bit into the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the thing is, is no one really wants these lands, so... Um, is anyone gonna want the product? So, uh, just to go on a little bit of a background, because Secret Lair Ultimate Edition 1 was such a mess. So, um, they brought out Secret Lair Ultimate Edition 1. Um, they, uh, they tried to extend it all a grant, all a branch to some of the LGSs. They, they gave them out. Um, the original price was, was, was supposed to be, I think, around the $150 range, something like that, $165, something like that. Around Commander Anthology kind of stuff. Anyways, they quickly skyrocketed up to, you know, people were selling them for four or five hundred bucks, or they were trying to anyways, I don't know who was buying them, um, and people were speculating on them, but of course, shortly thereafter, uh, the, sorry, the original, uh, the original date that they were supposed to come out was, uh, do I have the date here? It was in May anyways, and they pushed it back to July, which caused some extra issues as well. So, um, when they... When they announced it, or when they when they did it, they then shortly thereafter undercut the whole thing by announcing that if you bought the Secret Lair Summer Edition, you would get one of the fetches included in your Secret Lair Summer Edition. So took away a lot after you know after everyone had had bought into them, um, then took away part of it. And and this is kind of the thing is that you know there's there's greed going on, uh, and so. You know, you can't trust from Wizards of the Coast, and this was the problem with the product, um, when we've seen the prices tank, is that, you know, they seem like they're doing something nice, and then they undercut it. You get a nice product, oh, it's flashing bells, the very next product undercuts that product on a product set, because they're trying to, you know, they sell you something, and then they're they're making a backroom deal in, in, in the back, and they're, they're, they're taking away your money. So, you know, you can't trust that because you got the best card in a set, that it's not gonna be in the next set. Or they're not gonna make a secret lair, and they're not gonna make, you know, a hundred thousand reprints of that same mythic or rare right after um and your you know your card that you thought oh i'm gonna chase after that card i'm gonna buy the single of that card it might be 50 60 dollars you can't trust that it's not going to be in the next uh in the next set and so you know don't be surprised if we don't at some point see say that Ghidorah or those uh those those dinosaurs don't see don't be surprised if in 2021 there's not a secret lair uh ikoria Godzilla monsters, and they don't just reprint them in another sort of slightly changed fancy version, uh, which undercuts the whole value of collecting those, right? Uh, and this, because this has been the pattern, and they, they keep pushing it, pushing it to the edge. So, um, what happened with the original Secret Lair uh, Ultimate Edition is, you know, everyone was like, oh, we're getting this fancy product, it's coming in this fancy case, we're getting the five land, they've been reprinted, uh, they've been reprinted fetch lands for ages, you know, we've got this great thing. Well, sure enough, they then gave away them if you bought the sum secret or summer edition so i don't know how many that was um but i'm 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 guessing it was in the in the thousands and um so then you know you're you're kind of sitting there well then they brought out the secret lair fetch lands in zendikar rising uh and they weren't that hard to get you know we're still open them we got uh we, you know we got two i think in a box or two or three in a box uh we opened a couple days ago um and that's pretty normal to get get about two of them in a box that's not super rare you know if it was if it was like the expeditions that they did before where you know it's like one every six box you had a chance to get it um you know maybe then that uh, you know we're talking more of a fair thing because they're so rare but they're not making them that rare so they're not that hard to chase um you know if it was every three boxes there was a fetch maybe um that would be you know it'd be a different thing because they're just you know the one sixth as as possible to get and, and they'd hold their value but uh, you just never know when they do these things. So, um, and that's what they did to it. And, and you know, you, we've seen fetch prices. Uh, we've seen fetch prices go down quite a bit. It kind of needed to happen. I'm not gonna lie. They were getting a little bit ridiculous uh, to try to get a to try to get a, a fetch to play. Um, and they are a much needed thing for playing commander competitive, which is a big scene. Uh, you, you know, you're 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 just you're at a disadvantage if you don't have those cards and the other guys at the table do. So. Um, I don't really blame them for making a reprint, but kind of do it in a sort of a CD way. Oh, I got this fancy one, and then, oh, now you can get this other fancy version of it. Um, it's not really fair to the people who are buying them. Um, you know, there's people... Now, 
I'm not saying it's right that these stores got this product and they, you know, they doubled the price right away um, because of the market because you know there's a little bit of greed going on. But we're also in a time where it's hard for those stores to make money. They're they're getting very few of the products. Uh, they're getting their orders cut. Uh, they can't, you know, they want they want whatever 100 boxes of the new set and they get sent 20. Uh, and so you know they think they're gonna make you know 100 dollars a box times a thousand, which is pretty good, right? You're making 10 grand, pays your rent for a couple months. Um, but instead, they get sent 20, and you know we're talking about they're they're lucky to break even kind of thing, or or make just a little bit of money on it. So, um, and they've got to sell other products as well. So, now should they be 100% into Magic the Gathering, 100% into Pokemon? Maybe not. Maybe maybe a good store is uh, spreading out into other lines. But, anyways, it seems it seems kind of uh, it just seems sketchy. You know, it just seems a little greedy at the top. They're just anything they can do to suck money out of it any card that's fifty dollars or a hundred dollars you can bet going to see uh going to see a a reprint of that that card so you know look at your lists see what cards you have that are worth a hundred dollars or fifty dollars they're not on the fed if they're not on the reserve lift they're getting reprinted you know sylvan library is just going to get a mass reprint uh and that card's that card's held a lot of a lot of value it'll go down to fifty dollars or something like that from a hundred and whatever it is so um, so, uh, what else do I gotta say here? Um, so, the, the new Secret Lair coming out, uh, Secret Lair 2 is all about the pathway lands, or the flip lands, I, I, I like to call them, from Zendikar Rising. Uh, these lands have tanked hard. Uh, when they came out, I thought, oh, kind of a neat land, um, but as people play them, they're like, mm, it's not that good, right? Like, I'm kind of stuck with one color mana or the other. It's okay, like, it's, a, it's not a bad card to add. But I kind of feel like these lands are kind of around the scry lands. You know, you get the tower, you know, the tower comes into play, you get to you get to scry a card. Probably something like that. Um, not not certainly like a, a fetch or a, even a, even a, the life lands or anything like that. So um, so they haven't done really well. And, and, you know, I think they probably bottomed out for prices now. Um, but we're talking about these cards are maybe in the foil fancy version or maybe $15. So now this secret layer from that $15, if anything, is just going to knock that price down a little bit more. So you know, are we going to start to see foils of these lands for under 10 bucks? We, we might. The foil box toppers might be seven, eight bucks, um, which is a shame for a new fancy land. But you know, we're reprinting them again. So you know, what do you expect? Um, so um, they do look nice. I, I must admit, the arts look nice. Uh, I was looking at the art of them, and you know, it was it was pretty decent stuff. Uh, you know, branch loft pathway was really was really pretty. Uh, the bright climb, clear water pathway, crag crown, needle verge pathway, river glide pathway, and then there's four more that are coming out in Kaldheim. So they're like an immediately get a reprint. There's a reprint announced before they've even printed the set. They've announced a reprint of the set. So you can bet what's that going to do to Kaldheim? They better throw in something else good because you now have four cards that are going to hit the market and they're going to be. You know, those lands hopefully would have been a little bit sought after. You know, they're going to hit the market and right away they're going to be depressed in price. So um, you can talk Kaldheim. It's going it, to, if they don't put other good lands in there of some sort, other kind of, some kind of fancy, dancy, really exciting, got to have lands, that means lands are going to be not not real value. I feel like Mana Confluence is coming in Kaldheim. I got to, anyway, um, I feel like that's going to happen. So that'll be a thing that, that'll, that'll hold some value. Um, and I'm sure they'll throw something else in there that's pretty good. Maybe uh, they haven't recruited re Prismatic Vista in a, in a serious way yet, so why not press that um, and do a major reprint of it? So, I mean, hey, Fable Pass has already been in two sets, so why not in another? So, um, and I guess my my problem is the confidence people are having. Um, you know, we had Brazen Borrower in uh, Throne of Eldraine and Fable Passage. They were they came out in the set. They were really sought after. So as soon as the Challenger decks came a couple months later, we saw mass reprints of them, and then Brazen Borrowers in the list. So we've got another, not even just the regular, the full art uh, reprinted in the list. Um, thankfully, hasn't crushed the price of that card too much. But I mean, how many? If they reprint it in a secret layer, like at some point, it's just too much. There's just there's there's more. There's less buyers and there's more cards on demand and, and the, the card price goes down. So, uh, Fable Passage, you know, that one was pretty disappointing to me. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I, I you know, I, I thought, okay, I'm getting a good deal. I, I think I bought some for like $15 or something like that. And I thought, 
and even if there's some kind of minor thing going on with it, you know, it'll be okay. It'll it'll hold very ten. Well, they you know they reprinted it in core set. They they did a mean reprinting of it, and it's a card that's so uh, so made sense within the throne of Aldrain, and they just reprinted it like in a core set. Are you kidding me? So. Um, anyways, it seems like there's just it just feels like there's a lot of lot of greed. Let's get every dollar out of everyone. Um, at some point, people start to lose confidence, and I know um, you know I know the game's pretty healthy. There's lots of people buying the cards, uh, but at some point, you know when your collection when your collection keeps taking hits and hits and hits, uh, people get frustrated, and those people who are really loyal to the game uh, leave and and buy into other things. Uh, you know you can buy into Pokemon. It's really hot right now. Uh, you can buy into uh, new games like Flesh and Blood, um, and and so people start to look for those things, and I think that's why uh, you know a game like Flesh and Blood is really taken off. People have a little more confidence right now in the company. Um, wouldn't be surprised to see that game keep going because you know people are looking for other avenues. Stores are looking for other avenues on companies that are just decent to deal with, uh, and uh, and not and not just looking to undercut them and and, and screw them at every turn. So. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I'm not too negative in a lot of these videos. I, was, I felt like I was a little negative today, but that's okay. Uh, you know, we, we gotta have some balance when, when we see it. We wanna call it honestly. I don't wanna uh, give you a false sense. Um, the product itself, I mean, it won't be bad. I mean, it's, it's it'll be some pretty cards or whatever, but I just, I mean, who's, who's looking for this? I just can't see anyone looking for it, so. All right, well, everyone have a magical day. Goodbye. Thank you for watching Collectors of the Coast. Please subscribe and like below. If you like our content, please consider becoming a patron. Uh, patrons help us grow the channel uh, and we, uh, I'll get great deals and more. Uh, check us out on Discord if you'd like to become a part of the community. The information to join the Discord is in the description below.